Well, happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethel Plaza here on the 3rd of February. It's a blue sky day here. For our farmers out there, again, farmer clients, uh, we sent out the uh, 2024 Ag Outlook video here uh, last week. Again, so check your email. Uh, again, a lot of details on the year ahead global forecast around the world. And uh, no, we don't use any uh, groundhogs with our uh, long range forecasting. And uh, this guy's usually about 36% right. So I think uh, if you think it's going to be an early spring, yeah, maybe for the next two weeks, we'll see about the. Uh, Late February, March timeframe uh, may not be as springy. Um, robots, yeah, they can't—they're not meteorologists. They can't do what we do either. So we talked about this some of us in our farmcast uh, report, and I always laugh. Artificial intelligence, right? So you look at the uh, adjectives, the synonyms here: false, pretend, exaggerated, phony. Again, so I always find it amusing that uh, AI knows what it knows, whatever humans taught it. Uh, again, ask any of the. Uh, chat gpt series alexa about next year's weather and you get uh, i don't have information for the next but more than the next 10 days so again ai can't do what we do and uh, we've proven that over the last 20 years with these uh, fortune 1000 clients all over the world again predicting not only the year ahead weather but uh, year ahead sales and how it influences their pretty much everything they do business um, so again pretty cool technology some of the things we talked about are farmers. The good news here is the drought has done as expected here. It took a little while, uh, but uh, we're now down to a wet year. Uh, so 44% of the country is in dried at drought phases, and that's uh, actually below average. We should have about 48% of the country in dried at drought. Last year was at 62%, and the year before was 72% a peak of the last 20 years. So the good news is uh, El Nino rains have finally uh, made the U.S. Uh, quite a bit wetter. We think this trend will improve as we go through the spring, and even <clears throat> Iowa, there's Really, the last few months, a little misleading. Iowa as a whole has been the uh, uh, fourth wettest in 39 years. So, again, in this winter, not a lot, a lot of rain in the winter time, but uh, again, uh, even improvement on the way for Iowa. Excessive rainfall for sure here. If we look at the winter season, 1 December through 2 Feb here, uh, U.S., the most in 39 years. So, again, chart left there, bottom left. East Coast, if we aggregate the entire East Coast, uh, most in five years, second most in 39 years. And Northeast is uh, kind of ground zero for the relative record again so probably the wettest in 125 years in the northeast for the the winter season here so again very very wet and very concerned here about flooding as we go into the spring season here january is officially in the history books so this is a calendar view of uh january 1 through 31 so map left is max temps versus average uh, inset math there is uh, versus last year uh, so if we look at high temperatures here again they were about 4.2 cooler than last year colds in 10 years 16th colds in 39 years a little misleading here because we had a warm to epic polar vortex to back to warm. Uh, again, so again, it didn't mean we didn't have any cold weather. Now we certainly did. Snowfall was up about 34% versus last year, most in five years, 14th most in 39 years. Again, so you see the map there shows kind of the snowfall trends versus a year ago. So all those purples were 300% more snow than a year ago. Northwest, uh, parts of the Midwest, and uh, obviously here in the East Coast, Northeast. Again, rainfall 23% more than last year, number one most in 39 years for the U.S. overall. So a cooler, wetter, snowier January. Uh, part of this is just uh, El Nino. Again, we look at the uh, Equatorial Pacific, it's just warming of the <clears throat> Equatorial Pacific Ocean here, uh, collapsing as we speak. So El Nino has clearly peaked, um, and all the model guidance, no matter what you use here, is showing a moderate La Nina uh, pretty quickly, maybe as early as early summer. So again, a complete collapse of... Strong El Ninos typically end in moderate La Nina, so not atypical. And the reason we know the models are probably pretty accurate uh, this go around is you can look at the subsurface. So this is looking below the equatorial Pacific, all the way from Indonesia to Ecuador. So again, all Hawaii is kind of there in the middle. Uh, but you can see that below normal water temperature percolating toward the east and up toward the surface. So El Nino is uh, about to be in the history books here. Again, as this cold air makes it to the surface. The good news flu is also about to be in the history books here. It's uh, continuing its plummeting trend here. It uh, peaked uh, late December, early January, and now for the last uh, four weeks has been plummeting. Um, still 62% more than last year. Last year's spike was uh, much more intense toward Thanksgiving and much broader. This is much of more of a spiky season. Uh, we do believe in a two, two, three weeks here, this will be below baseline, and flu will be in the history books here for the 2024 season. If we look at last week across the world here, we're getting here today. Uh, warm again as the polar vortex gets strong and symmetrical to north pole uh, all the cold air gets sucked into it just kind of like a tornado it's all up there at the arctic um, so here in the u.s 12.9 warmer than last year number one warmest in 39 years 15 percent drier than last year dries in four 58 uh, percent less snow least in 32 years so again the theme is pretty similar in canada just off the scale 22.5 fahrenheit most likely the warmest uh, on record for canada here for this week uh, at least the warmest in 39 years 
So again, uh, warmer trends, a map inset left are the trends versus average. So really the cool spots would be limited to, to kind of a southeast Siberia, um, northeast Canada, northeast China, and uh, parts of Central Africa, and maybe Greenland and Alaska. A precip average map uh, left. Look at the polar vortex here. One thing we see here is, again, it was very strong and symmetrical. All that cold air is bottled at the North Pole, but look how it elongates here and maybe splits. Um, so this call was maybe a cross-polar um, flow uh, type vortex where, again, you can get cold air right out of Siberia <clears throat> toward North America. We'll see here. Again, this would be more toward the mid to latter half of February going into March. Um, so the good news is at least that the models are showing that it is becoming weaker ragged and splitting apart here. And when it does that, the cold air will move from the North Pole. And now the question is where. So we can think it'll be heading in our general direction here as we get into the mid to late part of February. This week ending here, 10 February here, um, here in the U.S. again, same general theme, uh, cooler and wetter and stormy, stormy in the West. If you want a cold, wet, snowy spot, you'd say it's the West this week. Uh, but again, overall for the U.S., 3.2 warmer than last year, second warm in 39 years, so much above average on that front. Way below average snowfall. Again, while it's up a little bit over last year, still third least in 39 years. Uh, rainfall also up, 47% wetter, what is in four years. Again, look at that very stormy weather there in California. They need it. Again, they're just now probably getting closer to average for their snowfall in the Sierras. Again, they're playing big time catch up after uh, virtually no snow in December. So again, the good news is they are catching up uh, on some of their snowfall, still way below last year's crazy uh, near record snowfall. So if we look at the six day snowfall trend here through the 8th of February here, again, all those purples are in the 12 to 18 inch plus range. So again, high elevations of the Sierras and the Northern Rockies, Central Rockies, not much for the eastern two-thirds of the country, at least over the next six days. However, we do, so again, with this bar show kind of the snowfall trends uh, nationally, um, year over year. So the, the blue bars are where it was much, much snowier that week there, two weeks there in January was the, the most snow in 30 years for the nation as a whole. Again, now we've kind of been a little bit of a lull, maybe an uptick here as we get toward uh, uh, the weekend here, the 10th, a uh, little more than last year, but, but not a lot. We do think the pattern is going to become snowier here. Again, just a question on this vortex exactly when it makes its move toward North America. Again, uh, so we're thinking um, February and the first probably three, four weeks of March are going to be quite a bit snowier and, uh, again, more similar to what we saw in maybe the latter part of mid-January. So a snowier pattern here for the spring. So we think the groundhog is probably going to be wrong uh, right for the next two weeks then wrong probably for the last four weeks uh, of winter here. We look at the last uh, next week here again, a week ending 17 February. So this is Valentine's Day, President's Day. Uh, good news is this is a store traffic signal. So when it's warmer, drier, and less snowy, that's good for you and I getting out and about, doing things, uh, restaurant sales. Everything does well in a warmer, drier cycle here. So 0 0.9 warmer than last year, warmest in seven years, second warmest in 39, 51% less snow, least in 13 years, and 51% drier, driest in nine years. So warm, a lot of not as lost snow, and dry is actually good. We'll see toward the end of this pattern here again. It's a little misleading in the east because we do believe east, southeast, south will get colder um, toward the end of this uh, next week here. So the 14, 15, 16, 17 time frame. Do look for a cooling trend, pretty substantial cooling trend, maybe getting back to average and slightly below average um, in the east and the southeast. If we aggregate these trends again, a little misleading again because you're aggregating uh, very, very, very warm conditions with a cooling trend toward the late part of this period. But uh, again, theme overall is a Warmer pattern, again, the cool spots are limited to Alaska, Greenland, and parts of northeast Siberia, which is, again, would be the source for us tapping into for the northeast uh, U.S. and the northern Europe. Map set left is the precip trends versus average. And again, you don't need to have, uh, you can have warm weather and have a lot of snow. So again, a lot of snow across Siberia and uh, northeast Canada and parts of Greenland. So that, folks, we hope you have a great week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little bit longer content here today, but a lot to cover. And uh, we will chat with you this time next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.